Welcome to Gray's Creek at Letha House Park, another location within Medina County Park District. Gray's Creek is a high quality stream and will serve as the focus of our stream study. Before we get started, what exactly is a stream? A stream is an area of flowing water on the surface of the earth. It is generally found at low points like the bottoms of valleys and flows in a channel from a higher point down to a lower point. This stream study will explore macroinvertebrates, vertebrates, and key habitat features within a stream. Macroinvertebrates are organisms that lack an internal skeleton and are large enough to be seen with just the eyes. They may also be called freshwater invertebrates as the organisms we will be searching for are living in a freshwater creek. Searching for macroinvertebrates may sound tricky, but they serve as the majority of living organisms within a stream. Some prefer to cling to rocks, others to burrow into substrate, and others hide in aquatic plants and root mats along the edges. Finding macroinvertebrates can be an important indicator of stream health. Some species are not tolerant of pollution, habitat changes, and environmental changes. Their presence in a stream is a good sign that it is healthy. There are many ways to look for macroinvertebrates. It can be as simple as carefully flipping over racks in the water, or as complicated as using a kick seine to explore larger areas in bigger creeks and rivers. Here we are looking at the bottoms of racks, as well as using a small aquarium net to scoop lightly sifted substrate. We'll come back to the net, but here on the rock is a water penny beetle. There are many tools that can be used to catch and observe macroinvertebrates. This image shows what we will be using today. A right in the rain field notebook, pen, net, tray, which is a recycled lunch meat box, and clear water from the creek, digital microscope, and a cell phone for capturing microscope images and video. Please note that these macroinvertebrates were returned to their original location within the stream after the filming of this video. Within our tray, we can immediately see this common stonefly cruising around in the water. The microscope allows us to get this closer view where we can see its two tails, which sets it apart from mayfly larvae, which have three tails. This is the same water penny beetle from our rock. These beetles get their name from their aquatic larval stage, pictured, which looks just like a flattened coin pressed to a rock in the water. The stoneflies are very active, there they are again, swimming around. Snails can often be found clinging and inching along rocks in the water. A careful look at this one will reveal its tentacles as it moves past the microscope. The snail casemaker caddisfly may be hard to see in the tray, but this up-close microscope allows us to see its intricately constructed shell or case that is shaped like a tiny snail shell made of even tinier rocks. A close look reveals its teeny legs emerging from within the case. This teeny bug is a stonefly, just a different kind. It is a rolled wing stonefly, and it may appear so thin because its abdomen, or the back of its body, remains roughly the same width along the length of the insect, where the abdomen of others tapers down. Within our tray we also found a melted mayfly larva. A careful look reveals a dark band across all three of its tails. A flathead mayfly larva was also found, and compared to the amelotid mayfly, this one seems flat, almost pancake-like. In fact, it's so flattened that its eyes are located on top of its head. This riffle beetle was also found in the sample from the rock. The rows of needlepoint dots are hard to see, but the two claws on the end of each leg are visible through the microscope. Healthy streams and rivers have a surprising amount of biodiversity hiding just below the surface, which is why it is important that any creek exploration is careful so as not to harm or disturb these small creatures. Creeks are not only home to macroinvertebrates, but also vertebrates or things with backbones. The flip of a rock or log, or the swipe of a net, might just reveal a resident frog, salamander, or fish. As we walk, look for larger, preferably flat rocks and logs, that may serve as appropriate shelter for frogs and salamanders along the edge of the creek. A flip of this rock reveals a northern two-line salamander. The salamander is typically found on banks of streams as an adult. It gets its name from the two dark stripes running along either side of its back, bordering a central broad stripe that is more lightly colored. Northern two-line salamanders lay their eggs under rocks in the water, and upon hatching, these young salamanders have gills and will live in the water. So watch your step! Both frogs and salamanders will prefer rocks and logs that are resting on the ground rather than firmly pressed into the ground, so look for things that are loosely resting on the surface. Remember that the goal is to leave things as they were found. If a log is rolled, gently replace it. If a rock is flipped, carefully place it back. And most importantly, be careful with these creatures and make every effort to observe with your eyes rather than with your hands.
A flip of this rock and the shift of a small log reveals a green frog. This green frog is an adult, but not yet fully grown. Like the northern two-line salamander, frog eggs are laid in the water, typically slow water like ponds or backwaters, and upon hatching, a tadpole will reside in the water as it slowly transforms to an adult that can live on land. It can take a green frog over a year to undergo metamorphosis from tadpole to frog and can take up to five years to reach its full adult size. This frog has a little way to go. A close look at a green frog will reveal a dorsolateral line or ridge that runs from the back of each eye along the length of the body. This helps to set it apart from the similar bullfrog. Healthy streams and rivers house macroinvertebrates that help to feed young salamanders and lead to adult insects that feed adult salamanders and frogs. Finding these vertebrates can indicate that you are walking through a healthy creek. When observing, studying, and discussing the health of a creek based upon the habitat, it is best to look at not one or two, but all features to determine its ability to support things like fish and macroinvertebrates. For example, scientists may use the QHEI, or Qualitative Habitat Evaluation Index, to rapidly study habitat features of Gray's Creek to determine its quality and ability to support fish. As we walk the creek, we may highlight a few habitat features. See if you can find any on your own. A down log may just look like a log to you, but we call it woody debris, and it provides structure for fish to hide under. Pools are deeper areas with slower water in the stream or river. Deeper pools are generally considered to be higher quality. A deep enough pool gets darker and cooler near the bottom, providing shelter and a place for fish to retreat to even in low water conditions. Substrate is the stuff at the bottom of the creek. If you're walking in a creek, it is what your feet touch. Many different things can make up the substrate of a stream, and some of them are better than others. This handful shows a wide range of sizes of gravel substrate. While gravel is not the highest quality substrate, it is not bad either. And as an added bonus, it's not embedded, meaning that it's easy to pick up, making it a more functional substrate. By being less embedded, small macroinvertebrates are better able to cling to substrate, which means that there is more available habitat and more available food for fish. Boulders are an even better substrate source when considering fish, especially when they are not embedded. Boulders can change the flow of water, as well as creating shelter for smaller fish and other organisms. Generally speaking, it is not uncommon to see silt in creeks, however the amount of silt visible is important. By gently swirling the substrate, we can see a small cloud of silt release. The silt is almost immediately washed away and the water returns to being clear. This is a normal to low amount of silt and is not a negative feature of this creek habitat. Boulder slabs are large like boulders, but flat like a slab of pancakes. As long as they are not embedded, they are yet another great structure for fish and larger organisms to find shelter below and are not a bad place to look for clinging macroinvertebrates. Riffles are areas of shallow, faster moving water with a broken surface, meaning that rocks are poking through the water. There's often more oxygen in the water here, so this can be a good place to search for macroinvertebrates and other small organisms. Aquatic macrophytes is just a fancy term for plants that are not algae growing in the water. Aquatic macrophytes are beneficial structures for cover, and more of them clustered together can serve as a nursery structure for small fish and organisms. Root wads are larger root structures reaching into the water. They provide cover in the stream for fish and other organisms, but they can also help to protect stream banks from erosion. The habitat features discussed in this stream study can serve as important clues about the health of the water and may also clue you into the location of neat aquatic creatures like frogs, salamanders, fish, and macroinvertebrates.